Hi, my name is Manish Gupta and in this video I'm going to talk about the Bella Bele benchmark. So let's get started. So what is Bella Bele benchmark? Uh, well, it's a, a benchmark of machine reading comprehension data set spanning 122 different languages. Um, you know, um, so that's it's basically a large data set right for machine reading comprehension task. Now, what does the data set look like and what is machine reading comprehension? Well, remember in school days we did this reading comprehension task where a large passage was given to us and then a question was asked and we were supposed to answer it, right? So the same task, um, but it's just that this particular data set contains data about this task in 122 different languages. Okay, so here is an example of English. So there is a passage here and then there are two questions which are shown here. So as you can notice, this is one of the questions and this is the second question. And for each question, there are four options which are supplied and therefore it is a four multiple choice question kind of a, a MRC machine reading comprehension task. So of which one of the correct one of the answer is correct and that's basically also highlighted. Okay. So of course the data set exists for several other languages and uh, Portuguese is also uh, an example for Portuguese is also shown right here. So Bele Bele in Bambara language sort of means big, large, fat, great, and it's basically a big data set with 122 different language variants. Okay. Now, amongst those languages, there are high resource languages, moderate resource languages, and low resource languages across 29 different language scripts and 27 different language families. Uh, the data set by itself is not very large in terms of number of questions. It has like 900 questions. Uh, obtained, uh, uh, you know, for 488 distinct passages. So most of these passages basically have two questions. Some passages actually have just one question. Okay. So overall, uh, you know, if you look at the overall data set across all languages and so on, it basically is about 100, uh, 110,000 rows, 110,000 rows in the data set. Okay. So for five of these languages, Hindi, Urdu, Bengali, Nepali, and Sinhala, they also uh, transliterate from the native language script to Latin script and uh, using something called uh, using a package called as Indic Excel Excelit. And they have made these uh, transliterated, uh, uh, you know, uh, transliterated examples also available where the of course there are examples in the original native language, but there are also examples in the transliterated language. Uh, in, in, sorry, in, in the native language as well as in the Latin script. Uh, the way this data set was created was uh, by starting from passages from the Flores 200 data set. And uh, you take Flores 200 data set has passages, aligned passages across several languages, English and non and, and other languages as well. So they take the English passage. They basically uh, give the passage to human annotators to create uh, candidate questions. Now they also ask human annotators to actually check the quality of the questions. Um, and they uh, as well also have some automated quality check scripts. So if both of them pass, then they actually have these English multiple choice question answers, which are then which then become a part of the Bele Bele corpus, right? Uh, they also take the corresponding non-English passages and uh, they actually take the questions that are generated for English and the non-English passages and ask human annotators to translate those questions uh, in English to other languages, and uh, then those lang then, then those questions are also checked for quality, and they become a part of the Bele Bele corpus, right? So that is how uh, uh, the corpus, the data set, has been created. A lot of human labeling involved in it. Yeah. Now the question is that this is a great corpus, great. How do the existing large language models and uh, uh, you know mass language models perform on this benchmark data set? So therefore, in this paper, they have also evaluated several models, so several mass language models as well as large language models. So by mass language models, I mean XLMV, InfoXLM, XLMR, those multilingual models, each of which have been trained on 100 plus languages. Right? Uh, they also evaluated on large language models uh, like uh, GPT-3 Turbo, Falcon, Llama 1 and 2, and then different size of these models. And also for Llama 2, they experimented with Llama 2 chart model as well. OK. So um, now um, they experimented with these models in four different modes. So um, for the large language models uh, like Llama 1 and Llama 2 and Falcon, they just did five short in context learning. So this is a uh, few short, but in the in context learning world um, where examples were provided in English. 
and then they also uh, did zero shot for in for instructed models llama 2 chat and gpt 3.5 turbo so no learning at all zero shot english instructions okay they did full fine tuning in english so basically these mass language models of course require uh, mlp last layer uh, multi layer perceptron last output layer and uh, therefore they also need fine tuning so uh, they did fine tuning for these models using a data set coming from these six different data sets okay so they fine tuned in uh, in english uh, they fine tuned in english and uh, then the cross lingual kind of a setting basically says they fine tuned only in english and evaluated cross lingual transfer so they evaluated in hindi japanese and so on okay the other thing that they also did was translate train all where the fine tuning uh, for doing fine tuning they translated the train samples to all the target languages and uh, then they evaluated the model on the test data as part which is the part of the bellevue benchmark Right. So that is that. So now, as you can see, the, the models have uh, different training setups, but they also have different sizes. So Llama 1, there are four different sizes of models, and they're way larger compared to, for example, XLMR or XLMV model, right, which is just 1.2 billion parameters. Um, as you can notice, the OCAP size also varies. So the OCAP size for many of these models is basically around 50K, I mean, well, 32K to 65K and so on. But then XLMV is a special model with a very large vocab size of about a million, 902K more specifically. Right? So what you observe is that uh, you, you, there are several observations. There are the results here, right? And uh, there are several observations based on these results. Uh, so, so first of all, there are results for overall average results. Then there are results for English and there are the results for non-English. Right? There are also these results greater than percent greater than 50 percent and the per, uh, percent greater than 50 and percent greater than 70. So this basically means that uh, uh, what uh, so so you know um, um, uh, how many percent of languages was the model able to get greater than 50 percent accuracy, right? Or how many percent of languages was the model able to get greater than 70 percent accuracy? Now there are so many things to observe, but uh, the main things to observe. Is that for English data set, Llama 2 base gets the best result, 91% accuracy, right? In the five shot uh, in context learning setup, right? So that's basically the best accuracy that uh, uh, that is obtained on the data set for English. Okay. For non English, the best accuracy is obtained by XLM V model. Uh, and uh, I think the major contribution for that is the large vocabulary that you have here, right? So essentially, the increased vocabulary size for uh, uh, XLMV essentially leads to significant improvement in the for the low resource and medium resource languages, which is what gives uh, XLMV uh, as 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 the best model for uh, uh, for the overall uh, you know overall variable benchmark, right? So that's basically the best model. Um, so in fact, if you also look at this column, XLMV sort of performs. Uh, uh, you know, greater than 50% accuracy, it has for 76.2% languages. So that basically means XLMV is super awesome when you think about low resource and medium resource languages on the Bele Bele benchmark, on the Bele Bele MRC benchmark. Okay, here are more results. So if you look at uh, this plot, you know, what is the plot? Well, on the X axis you have, uh, so this plot is for Llama 1, Llama 1 and four different model sizes. On the X axis you have the model size in billions of parameters. On the y-axis, you have accuracy, and there are so many curves. What are those curves for? Well, those curves are for different language families. Right? So what you observe here is that for almost every language family, you see the curve going up, which basically means that as the scale increases, as the model size increases, uh, each language family sort of benefits from the larger scale models. Right? So that's the most important observation here. Now, although it is not shown in the picture, remember I told you that for five different languages, there are also romanized versions of the original scripts. So especially for Hindi, Urdu, Bengali, Sinhala, and Nepali. So for these languages, actually for all model, all the models perform stronger in the native script rather than in the latent script. So transliteration does not help. You know, these models really perform well in the original lat lat native script itself, except for the Falcon model. Uh, and well, the point is that Falcon model has not been trained on some of these. Uh, uh, the pre-training data does not include some of these languages, right? But in general, if pre-training data was included as part of these uh, models, uh, then uh, uh, then they observe that uh, you know native script is better than transliteration to Latin script to Roman script. Okay, yeah. Now the right side plot sort of shows you very interesting plot. So on the on the x-axis, what you have is languages. On the y-axis, what you have is accuracy. 
and uh, you have results for four different models being shown here in FETSLM large, uh, XLMB large, uh, LAMA to chat and GPT 3.5 turbo under different settings that you see here, translate, train all and zero shot settings. Right? So what you observe is that uh, uh, you observe, uh, uh, so the pink colored curve, the GPT 3.5 is actually the best for the top 20 languages. So these languages are sorted by average score or, or I think the median score across these different uh, four uh, models. But then, you know, what you observe is that GPT 3.5 Turbo is best on the top 20 languages. So, uh, so that's that. But after 40 or 50, you know, its performance sort of falls behind uh, even Info XLM and XLMV. So, as you see in this particular range, uh, so the pink curve yeah, has, a, has a big drop here, right? So, essentially, if you look at the pink curve, GPT 3.5, essentially it does uh, uh, really well uh, uh, for, uh, you know, for 53 languages, it has accuracy greater than 50, but then it does really well only for the top 20 languages. Now, if you look at uh, uh, first 40 languages, now if I increase the horizon a little, you observe that InfoXLM is doing better than XLMV. So InfoXLM is the green one, XLMV is the orange one. So the green is better than orange. I mean, well, they're comparable, but green is somewhat better than orange for the first 40 languages or so. Okay. Uh, however, XLMV sort of proves more capable on the long tail, right? So essentially in the long tail, if you observe, you will basically see that the orange one sort of dominates, especially in this region. If you observe, you know, uh, uh, the orange uh, one is better. Okay. So, and uh, therefore, you know, the conclusion is that the large vocabulary and the balanced pre-training data that XLMV has helps it get uh, get really good results um, for uh, uh, low and medium resource languages, but uh, English-centric LLMs like uh, Llama to chat are better in the first few languages. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you basically look at it, uh, if I just look at GPT 3.5 curve, it basically has a drop right there, right? If I look at uh, the Lama to chat curve, you sort of see that drop like that. I'm, I'm basically just trying to draw average curves. And if you look at, uh, uh, you know, the green curve, you basically observe, uh, you know, the green curve uh, info XLM basically dropping there. And then if you look at XLMV, well, it sort of performs really well. The curve does not really drop much. Okay? So XLMV sort of performs really well all across. Uh, but of course, at the in the head in the in the languages which are popular, it, it's not as good as uh, the English centric Lama to chat model. Uh, uh, English, uh, sorry, GPT 3.5, GPT 3.5 model. Okay. okay, so in summary, in this video, I talked about the Belebele benchmark, which is basically a, a multi-choice questions benchmark for uh, for for uh, you know uh, MRC, so uh, MRC task, multiple reading comprehension task, uh, and uh, well, the data set basically contains not too many questions. It's basically just. Uh, 900 questions, but across 122 languages, which is really the most important selling point. So this is one of those rare data sets which has uh, many medium and low resource languages. And uh, in this work, uh, the authors evaluated the LLMs in fine tune, zero shot and few shot uh, in context learning kind of settings. The takeaway being that large vocabulary size sort of helps a lot for low resource and medium resource languages. However, for uh, high resource languages typically you observe that the English centric LLMs like GPT 3.5 Turbo are doing really good. Okay. Hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.